Hey everybody, welcome to Slash Bash, where today I am bringing you another Choosing Beggar Reddit video. If you are new to the channel, then subscribe and click on notifications so you don't miss out on the fun. In our story today, we have a Choosing Beggar psychotic neighbor who was apparently very rich, but who still won't pay her bills. Let's jump right in. This all started a little over four years back when our new neighbors moved in. They were a married couple from Norway, and it's common for Norwegians to work in their home country who then live in Sweden, since housing is a lot cheaper in comparison. So they got the house next door to ours since our old neighbors wanted to live in the city instead. In the beginning, they were nice enough, liked to have a chat when we walked by, it was quite lovely to have some new people out here on the countryside. One day, however, the wife of the pair, the infamous choosing beggar, asked my mom if she could rent some of our land so her horses could have more space. Our land was maybe four times as large as theirs, since their home didn't come with a lot of property, so we figured why not. We put the rent on a really low price since they lived next door to us, and that way our land would be cared for since we didn't really use it. Choosing Beggar then proceeded to ask us if we could put up all the fence since she and her hubby would be working that weekend and we really wanted it to be done this weekend. My mom politely declined and they talked about other stuff. That was the first red flag that we ignored. We did end up helping out a little though, but hey, some small coin and not having to mow the field sounded good to us. Oh boy oh boy were we in for a ride. As I mentioned, we put the rent on a very low price of $200, or 2,000 Swedish crowns a year, or $20 per month for however much land they wanted to use. We had about 1,700 square meters in total. As long as they didn't fence up our house, we didn't really care. We love animals, so the thought of having four-legged love bugs on our backyard was nice. Before deciding anything, my mom asked me how I felt about it, since she didn't want to potentially do something that would be too big a change for me. I don't have enough words to describe how much I love my mom for considering my feelings like that. Of course, I said yes. However, despite the low rent, months went by and they didn't pay us once. They put up the fence pretty much the same day we made the deal, but time went by and we didn't see a penny. My mom figured she could politely ask how they wanted to pay the rent since it was $20 per month or $200 per year. Hey, what's up? Just wanted to ask about the rent for the land. It's been a while, so I figured maybe you guys decided to pay the yearly rent in August? Let me know. Oh yeah, we were gonna pay the year rent in August. Should have told you. Sorry. All right then, just wanted to check. You have a lovely day now, cheers. Insert heart emoji. We figure that this would be the end of it. We like to think the best of people, so we let it go and went back to our own business. August came and left, still no money came. Mom didn't want to come across greedy or rude, so she waited for another month before saying anything. But at some point she wanted to text my neighbor and at least ask about it. Maybe they just forgot? It's been seven months after all. Hi, just wanted to check in regarding the rent for the land. Last month you were supposed to pay the yearly rent, but nothing came in. Do you think you can resolve it by this upcoming paycheck? My mom knows how tough it can be before payday, so she can be more patient than a saint. Oh yeah, we totally forgot. Just give me until payday. Okay, no problem. Payday came. Guess what? Nothing again. Thing is, this wouldn't really bother us if they just had a tight income, but the wife was rich as frick. She made a buttload of money in a mere weekend, so we didn't really understand why $20 was too much to ask. This went on and on. Mom nagged, they came with excuses, yet no money came in. Mom is a single mother of three kids. I was included in kids then, as I wasn't 18 yet. My pregnant sister lived with us, and Mom works as a sub-nurse within elder care. Another $200 a year would have been helpful. 
This was where my mom, older sis, and I started to grow irritated. Now it had been one and a half years and hadn't seen a cent of the rent, yet her horses and fence remained on our property, while choosing beggar gave us a big smile while tending to her horses. With time, we started to notice a few things about our dear sweet neighbors. They never paid for anything, ever. Electricity was cut off numerous times, internet was removed a few times, hoofsmiths, I don't know what they're called in English, never received their pay, and so on. Also, we believe they had an unhealthy relationship with alcohol. More and more often, strangers knocked on our door looking for our neighbors, saying they haven't paid for any form of service for months and need to get hold of them. Once again, this was weird since both of them made good money. If this wasn't bad enough, they always wanted to borrow stuff from us. Money, wine, mostly wine, general stuff, and would even ask us to look after their horses when they were at work in Norway. Of course, we helped because we didn't want the poor babies to suffer because their owners were being choosing beggars. Didn't take too long until we got to see the large amount of crazy the wife possessed in her rotten cigarette poisoned soul. The cops came to their house and she was livid, kicking, screaming, spitting, and more. Apparently, the husband accused Choosing Beggar of having been abusive towards his daughter. He had her with his ex, and she turned full psycho and called the cops on him, who according to the officers was calm the whole time. What a way to prove her innocence. The cops had to hold her back until the husband could get the flip out of there. He didn't come back and they filed for divorce just a few days later. Choosing Beggar kept the house and the horses. We checked up on her since we didn't know the full story. I think she accused him of having an affair with a younger woman, but I'm not sure. But we supported her. It's not easy having a spouse leave you with a lot of responsibility, so we gave her the benefit of the doubt. Wrong choice. After that, everything went south. Choosing Beggar started having outbursts, still refused to pay rent, and even her dogs started acting up. One of them even bit my younger sister. She was nine, and if she hadn't been wearing a thick winter jacket, she could have been hurt really bad. Even with the jacket on, she had bruises for almost two weeks. But of course, Choosing Beggar chose to blame a nine-year-old for the whole incident. Later, we also found out for sure that she was addicted to alcohol as well as gambling, which is why she was always broke despite the money she made. Another year and a half passes and mom kept asking her to pay the rent. She never did. Mom gave her one final warning, but she wouldn't budge. Choosing beggar now owed us $600, all because she refused to pay $20 out of her $5,000 or more paycheck. So she kept renting, but always gave us attitude whenever the topic of paying for it came up. At this point, they gave a lot of clear, I make a lot of money, so I don't have to pay for anything vibes. Then, my sister finally had enough. She couldn't stand seeing my mom being used like this anymore by this crazy grunt. So, she put on some gloves, a pair of boots, walked outside, and started taking down the fence. Sis asked me if I wanted to join in on the fun, but I was too anxious. So instead, I stayed inside to enjoy the view of my older, visibly pregnant sister laugh like a villain and take down the fence with the biggest grin I ever did see, without breaking the fence, of course. Lo and behold, out of the house next door marches a screaming banshee towards my sister, shouting every profanity she could come up with. Once Choosing Beggar reached my sister, she started pushing her and tried to start a fight with her, despite clearly seeing that she was pregnant. I was in shock, so I didn't think of taking any pictures or film the whole ordeal. I was concerned for my sister's safety, but was too scared to go outside. My sister saw me through the window and gestured at me to stay inside, and then my calm breeze of a sister wouldn't give Choosing Beggar the pleasure of giving any aggression back. So she calmly and politely stated that violence wouldn't be beneficial for any of them. You flipping witch! I'm gonna stab you, you blank! No wonder your man left you, you flipping blank! 
Stop touching my stuff or I'll call the police, you witch. My sister smiles. Choosing beggar, do you truly believe that shouting rude words will resolve anything? Come now, let's go inside, have a cup of tea and talk about this like adults, okay? How dare you talk to me like this? I'm gonna call the police, you filthy blank. Please, there's no need to shout. If you want to call the police, feel free. However, for your own benefit, you might want to calm down before calling to avoid any misunderstanding. After a few minutes of this exchange, Choosing Beggar marched back home, still screaming, and slammed her own door to her house behind her. Surprise, surprise, the cops never came. It's what she always threatened with whenever people didn't do as she pleased. My sister came inside again and we both sighed at the person next door, who was anything but a reasonable adult, and made ourselves some tea. Not long after this, one of our dogs escaped and ran outside without any of us knowing. We have a wolf dog who was then only a puppy. Not a full-grown dog, a puppy. Very curious woofer and would take any chance to run out of the house and sniffle on anything she could find. Unfortunately, little to our knowledge, she learned how to open the door and quietly snuck out. So there I was, watching a show on my computer by my desk. It was located around a corner and a few small steps from my front door, so I had no way of seeing Doggo escape despite being on the same floor. Then I heard some mumbled noises that came closer by the second and suddenly the front door to our house flew open. Of course, it was Choosing Beggar who stormed into my house without permission and started screaming at me. I can't handle confrontations at all, so I just froze in pure panic and couldn't even move. Didn't take many seconds before I started crying. She was in my house without anyone's consent to be there, red in the face, yelling like a crazy person, and started banging her fists against the walls or whatever was closest. We're lucky that she didn't destroy anything or actually hurt anyone during her fit. How flipping dare you, you witch! Your dog is killing my horses! I'm gonna beat you to death, you hear me? You're not gonna take another flipping breath! I was shaking and was completely powerless. I mean, if anyone was capable of killing anyone, she definitely was. Luckily, my older sister was home and rushed down the stairs to see what was going on. She saw Choosing Beggar and then me being scared, so my sister went into protect family until death mode. She stepped in between us, shielding me like a mama bear and told Choosing Beggar to get the flip out of our house and show us what was so wrong that she somehow was entitled to commit crimes on our property. And if she didn't leave, she would do whatever it took to get her out of our house and wasn't afraid to use force if needed, prego belly and all. The banshee stopped in slight shock of my sister's new attitude towards her, but quickly resumed screaming and went outside to show us the crime scene. She kept threatening us the whole way there and scared the living crap out of her horses while doing so. We got there in like a minute, but the crazy part was that our murderous pupper wasn't even anywhere near her horses. Kira, as our pupper was called, was running around in the wheat fields quite a bit far away from the horses or rolling on the grass while nibbling the air. Then we checked the horses, but none of them was hurt, just stressed from her screaming. So Choosing Beggar stormed into my house and threatened to murder me for literally no reason. We called mom after all of this and she officially had enough. I filed a complaint to the police so her behavior is documented on the police register. I hate to admit it but that threat hit me harder than I first thought and it affected me for months to come. I was shaking in fear every time I walked past her house and would occasionally cry thinking about it. I never thought I would feel so unsafe and vulnerable in my own home. Now, physically I'm a strong person, a broken bone or rolling downstairs doesn't bother me, but confrontations break me down like nothing else, so this day had me flipped up, especially since it came so suddenly with a lot of impact. I should note that our pooch was okay though, we gave her a good checkup in case that nightmare of a person might have hurt her, but she was fine. Later that afternoon, Choosing Beggar left for work, Mom came home, and we all helped take down the fence and gently lead the horses to her own property. 
making sure they were fed and wouldn't escape anywhere. Property secured and love bugs safe. We received more profanities for a while afterwards through text, but ignored them. When Choosing Beggar came back and saw what we had done, she texted my mom about it. What the hell is wrong with you people? Hello? Hello? Answer me! How dare your people treat me like this, you flipping peasants? I make more money than you could even dream of! My mother, being herself, didn't really feel guilty about taking away the rich lady's free benefits. Mom calmly replied, Then pay the rent. How dare you, you witch! You can't treat me like this. I'm going to call the cops on you and tell them you stole my stuff and hurt my animals. Do it. I'll make some coffee for them. Flip you! Mom sends her a heart emoji. Choosing beggar blocked her. We all had a good laugh. We found out a few months later that she tried to sell the house, but nobody wanted it. She wanted way too much for it, and the entire house smelled like cigarettes and had some yellow marks on the walls. So no luck there. Time went on and we saw her less and less. We thought nothing of it and moved on with our lives. The less we saw her face, the better. But one day, when walking our dogs, we saw this random dude by the stables and decided to say hi. We didn't recognize him and figured that maybe it's someone choosing beggar asked to help her with the horses while she was in Oslo. Nope, it was better. Turned out he was our new neighbor. Apparently, we were not the only person she owed money to. She ended up being in so much debt to so many services and such that the bank took her house. So she had to move her trashy butt back to Norway. We could barely believe it. We never have to see her again. And we got a nice new neighbor who seemed to be pretty cool so far. This calmed my anxiety down so much I can't even describe it. I was afraid to be in my own home for so long I even had trouble sleeping at night because I was afraid she would hurt me or my family. But that fear is long gone. My anxiety is much better and I feel safe again. We of course never got the money, but not having choosing beggar around anymore is absolutely priceless. I wish I had the writing skills to end this story in a good way, but I hope you enjoyed my story. I guess my message is, don't be nobody's witch, and if somebody starts acting up, make sure to record it. Thanks for reading. Here's an update. Okay, so today my mom was on her way home from work. She saw that our new neighbor was out and decided to stop and talk to him. Before she even had time to utter a hello, he said, Oh hi! Hey! Did you see the cops here today? Apparently, the cops had come to knock on his door earlier that day and asked where Choosing Beggar was. Turns out, about 20 people in our small area had come together and reported Choosing Beggar to the police for fraud and they needed to find her. This lady has managed to piss off a mob of people and local business owners who were sick of her BS and wanted their money. Seems like we were not the only people Choosing Beggar tried to screw over. It also turned out that she owed someone in Oslo over $10,000 for a horse training. Apparently, the ones who wanted to sue her pleaded a good case and had some proof to back up their stories, and now the authorities are looking for her so they can take her to court. They had hoped that our new neighbor knew where she was or how to find her to make the arrest easier. Unfortunately, he had no idea and they have to look elsewhere. The search continues, but I'll be sure to update if we hear anything else. Me and my mom are eagerly awaiting more news. This has been John from Slash Bash. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video and want to see more of them, then please hit that subscribe button. We'd love for you to drop a like and share it with your friends, and we'll see you in the next one.